Today we have Jim Kellner with us today, and I am really excited to talk to Jim. Um, so Jim has entertained audiences for well over 20 years. He has helped thousands of people change their lives with the power of hypnosis, like a lot of you watching, and is the author of Navigating Success and has also spoken on the TEDx stage. So clearly just a valuable um, asset to this community. You know, Jim, in your own words, what do you feel like gets in, like, what is the biggest thing you, you see maybe is the reason why a lot of this audience is holistic healers and hypnotists, like that gets in the way of them really getting and putting themselves out there and making a name for themselves. Fear, fear gets in the way and they don't, they don't, they don't push through it. That fear of, you know, and, and this is the big one. What if they don't get hypnotized? That's what I hear from so many people when they first start, when they first start doing hypnosis, or what if it doesn't work? You know, what if I, I do my one session stop smoking program that I learned from the greatest stop smoking hypnotist trainer in the world, you know, but it doesn't work. And so that they got, they, they just, they, they keep playing that tape. And so they never actually launch, you know, they never. So one of my classes is called launch your hypnosis career now, because they just don't launch. They're just coasting down the, the runway. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, maybe you're seeing a, maybe some of you watching are seeing a client here and a client there, maybe you're part-time. And I remember when I was part-time and just sort of like on the side type of thing, like looking around at other um, holistic healers and hypnotists. And I was like, how are they, how are they full-time? Like in my head, I was like, this is impossible. I can never do this full-time, but you're, you're right. It's like, there's this, there's this mentality of like, this is all it can be. It's just like a, a side time, um, a side hustle. And, and clearly you've made a name for yourself, put yourself out there on a TEDx stage uh, at that. So, oh, yeah. you know, and we were just talking about this, like, especially now with COVID and, uh, you know, everybody being online now, it's all about putting ourselves out there online. And we were just talking about this, right. you know, this, this, this idea of like, why people start and then they stop. Maybe you do a live stream for a minute and then you stop, or you put a post out and then you stop, you know, like what may be getting in the way for this group, you know, who wants to put themselves out there, but like, what could the fears be around? Like what specific fears could be um, holding them back? <clears throat> well, I think we're all afraid of like people laughing at us or, you know, writing bad comments or, you know, one of the things, and I can remember this and, and people, so people sometimes don't believe this, but there was, there really was a time when I was, if you watch me on Facebook, you think I'm bold and fearless and all that, but there was a time I wasn't like that. There was a time when I would post my blog articles on Facebook at like three o'clock in the morning, because I didn't want anybody to see them. Cause I was afraid my colleagues would jump on there and go, well, who's Jim to be saying this, you know, he's just, he's a nobody. And, um, but I knew I had to post to social media so that I could, um, for my SEO, you know, from people to find my website. So I would do it. Uh, and it was just, it was just fear of what, you know, what people might, might think. And what I found, you know, is the thing is, is what you're, you're going to discover is that nobody doing better than you is ever going to come down on you. They're never going to, they're not going to waste their time. Really. They may roll their eyes, who knows, but <laughs> we don't care if you're, if I'm doing better than you, why do I care what you're doing? I'm like, I, I don't even want to, I've got too many other things to do, you know? And the people that aren't doing as good as you, um, that's, that's their, that's their only game. They're, they're not in the arena. So why would you, why would you care what they think? And it's, but it really is tough. It is tough to get past that, um, that, that fear, but for God's sakes, you're a hypnotist, you know, <laughs> physician, <laughs> heal thyself. That's true. <laughs> like you have the skills. <laughs> right. And in a way I'll tell you, so I'll tell you, Lydia, it's, it's kind of, um, so the people that don't launch and they just won't, and even though I push them and encourage them and try to help them and everything, mm -hmm. I sort of go, you know what, it's good that you're not because you're not, you're not good at this work then, because how can you help somebody else if you won't even help yourself? Yeah. And, you know, we all struggle with stuff ourselves, you know, like, um, I can't fix all of my own problems, but you know, I can do a trade with another hypnotist, you know, and you can jump into one of the Facebook groups and you can get, you know, this is why it's really important to stay, um, because uh, I, I want to kind of come back to what you said about being consistent. And I've been guilty of this too. It's hard. You know, we were talking before we got on here about how now you're basically a business. Yeah. Right. And so GM, Ford Motor Company, you know, IBM, Microsoft, they don't have bad days, right? They're, they show up every single day, but they're a company, but we have to kind of get in that mindset. Like uh, whatever you're feeling, you got to open up the door. You got to open up the shop. You got to serve your customers. And uh, one of the strategies we were just talking about, I don't know if you want to talk about it now. Sure. Let's jump in. Yeah. Yeah. Is um, 
one of the things that I started doing was um, I bank content so that I always have something available. And then, um, you know, when you're feeling good, because I think we probably all have this. Do you just happen to you, Lydia? Like you, you get all excited. You put out like a whole bunch of content at once. You feel so inspired. And then, ah, maybe I'll go a couple of weeks without having another new idea or something. Yeah. You know, I think it's honestly, it's hard. It's challenging to always, I mean, honestly, this was something that kept me from going, really putting myself out there was like, well, what do I do on Mondays? What do I do on Tuesdays? Right. What do I do on Wednesdays? And I was like, this was something I was asking myself like two years ago. Yeah. And today that question hasn't been answered. Oh yeah. I have the same thing. I do. And I'll watch these, I'll watch these videos and stuff about, you know, having, you know, about a, a social media strategy. And I'm like, oh, that looks like a good one. I'm going to, I'm going to do that one. And then I, I don't do that one. And then, oh, there's a better one. And, and then I'll do some research. What's the best, you know, best practices for, and then it's like, just do something, you know, um, it would be ideal if you had like a, have it set up like as a funnel, sort of like how I'm going to present information that's going to bring them down a, a road to they finally, you know, buy my product or work with me. Mm -hmm. But if you're not there yet, at least getting, you know, and I'll tell you one of the things, the reason I get a lot of my opportunities is because I'm big on social media. I'm all over the place and I'm out there. So people know what I do. They know my name. Yeah, that, that's really it. Like if, and it sounds obvious, but it might not really be at the forefront. Like if you are feel like you're hiding, you know, mm -hmm. and you're like, where are all the clients, but you're hiding, like, can you <laughs> right, see exactly Again, like, I know it sounds obvious, but this was a, yeah. sort of a blunder I was making it was like, how come nobody's coming? Where, how come my phone? And I was, so one of the biggest mistakes I made was I started just pumping ads to a website, just pumping ads. And at the time it seemed great because my phone is ringing off the hook. However, it was just really clients who were just not ideal. They were not ideal. It was a lot of like, um, people like not really committed or ghosting, rescheduling. And all, while I was getting clients, it wasn't like, I wasn't able to go full time. Honestly, that was what was keeping was like um, the sort of the niching down part, if you want to call it that or specializing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, going back to what you were saying, like the consistency showing up and I know maybe maybe um, we're talking about the same thing, Jim, like us as hypnotists and healers, we want to be the healers. We want to be the hypnotists. We don't want to do the marketing. <laughs> exactly. <I'm writing. laughs> it, this is one of the things I've, I, I remember, I remember, I remember have this, this thing, like, like I want to do hypnosis, you know, and I have people in my, people in my classes. I don't want to do marketing. I don't either. I would have went to marketing school, not hypnotist school. <laughs> So we get it guys. Like, can you hear us yeah. now? Like totally get it. <laughs> right. And this was the thing that was keeping me back was, um, I actually kind of scared myself out of it. Like, I, I don't know how many programs, coaching business, Facebook ads, uh, programs I went into and did not complete them or quit prematurely oh, yeah. and blame the coach, blame the program, because really deep down, I did not want to run a business. I did not want to do right. marketing. I didn't want to put ads out there. I didn't want to do that. And that's what really kept me full time and was going to keep me, uh, I'm sorry, part-time was going right. to keep me part-time until I was ready to own and operate a business. So um, you know, just speaking of this, Jim, like what, what are maybe like a couple, two or three mistakes that you see other hypnotists or healers out there making when it comes to marketing, let's say on, on social media, or maybe what are some obvious ones that you might be seeing? Well, I think the, the ones that are like, you can tell they're, they're clearly, clearly desperate mm -hmm. um, because they're, they're just spamming with their offer instead of offering anything of value. And I see, I remember there was this guy on, on Instagram and I would see, it would seem like every couple of days he was specializing in something else. It was, it was now specializing in anxiety. Oh, and I've got this stop smoking program two days later. And I got this other thing. And, you know, I think it, it takes discipline. It really does. And that's why, honestly, you shouldn't be, a, I mean, we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to do this. And I'll, I'll be honest, you shouldn't have to do your own market. You shouldn't have to do your own bookkeeping or any of that stuff. And hopefully you'll get to a place where you can maybe afford to hire that out, have somebody else do your marketing or whatever. Um, because it is difficult, especially when the, when the, when the, you know, the house payment is due, the car payments due, um, and you're really struggling, but it takes discipline to go, no, I'm, I'm going to offer value first. Um, mm -hmm. cause that's kind of the world we live in now is like, it's content marketing. We have to give away a bunch of stuff in the hopes that people will come, come for with us, but just having that, that kind of 
you can just kind of tell when they're, when they're really, it's really, they got that when they need to pay something right away. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. You've probably seen it too. <laughs> like I've been there. I've been sure. that person. Yeah. yeah. And I have looked back and look for every, everybody watching. I have looked back at some of my old Facebook videos from like five years ago. And I was like, I was like, I did not just put that out there. <laughs> but you know, we need to start somewhere, right? Like I, I used to, going back to what you were saying, I would throw up all over my personal Facebook page. And if you want the fastest way to lose cre- credibility is to post mm-hmm. like five times a day mm-hmm. on your yeah. personal Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the one that gets me too is like, um, I just had two, I just had two openings, you know, I've got room for two more people or something. And I'm like, ah, do you really have just room for two more people? Could you take three? Really? I don't know. And maybe that is a legitimate thing, but it sounds, it sounds like a marketing thing to me that your, your uh, scarcity there. Um, and I've done it, you know, I've been like, Hey, I just, I had an opening in my schedule. You know, I also have 20 other openings, but yeah. you got this one, especially for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like what, what would you say is missing for this group? Like, is it, is it often, it's this the word authenticity that's thrown around that, but even then people still get stuck, stuck because they're like, okay, me being authentic. Is that like me being authentic, like authentically creating urgency or authentically right. like following up with people obsessively? Like, like, what would you, is it as authenticity or is it, is it something else you feel like is, is what's missing here? Well, I think that um, authenticity to a certain extent, and I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I have a, I have someone that's that's uh, pretty close to me actually, and they're also on on Facebook, and they have a business, and they're kind of into different stuff than me, crystals and astrology and all this kind of stuff. They're not a hypnotist, um, and they're being their, their authentic self by talking about how broke they are all the time, and oh, trying yeah. to sell, and trying to sell. You know, this hey, I've got this special ten dollars, and I've got this thing over here for twenty, and and I really just want to sit them down and go, hey, look. This is not the way you're not going to attract the people that you want to attract. Um, Jim Lutz actually told me something uh, a long time ago. Um, I never heard, I, you know, I'd always heard like it's, it's easier to sell to wealthy people um, or people with money anyway. And I was always like, well, why is that? And he finally broke it down for me because they only have one decision to make. Can I, can I, you know, do I want to do it? That's it. Mm-hmm. They don't have to go to, can I afford it? And so I'm not saying you should only, go after, you know, wealthy people. But if you at least kind of make your marketing kind of aimed at people that are maybe at a higher level than you or, or right around your level, um, you're going to make more money. And then you can spend your extra time uh, giving pro bono sessions, you know, and, and offering discounts to sliding scales to folks that can't afford it. But no one's ever going to come to you. That's, that's sort of, no one wants help from somebody who's below them as far as levels go. And I don't mean below them as far as a worth, worthwhile person or something. I just mean that's that's not doing as well in life, you know? Um, yeah, thinking habits, right? And- exactly. So somebody who's successful, they don't want to go, you know, and I see this sometimes, people will go on and they'll do like a Facebook live or something. And they're wearing like a, a look, what looks like a dirty t-shirt and they've got, you know, just some bare white wall in the background and it doesn't look pleasing. And so why would somebody with money with why would they want to work with you yeah yeah there's something there i don't know if it's like energy or just professionalism professionalism but, yeah but yeah. it's like just what about if you just watch your stuff back would you give whatever you're charging you know three thousand or like let's right. say a high ticket here i think a lot of healers and hypnotists are selling per session right they got their intro yeah. session they've got their package and honestly, that kept me kind of on the get client hamster wheel, like Absolutely. Oh, the next three sessions, next, yep. client, next client. And, you know, what we can start to learn from coaching, the coaching world is to start, you know, create client retention through a higher ticket, um, niching down, increasing our prices. But like you said, we often hear this, I can't afford it. And I know what I learned was that I kept getting, I can't afford it when I kept using, I can't afford it. And it was really just a defense mechanism. Right. Yeah. That's a good, good way of thinking about it. Go ahead. I just, I was just, wow, that's a really good. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed like, um, I, well, I eventually realized that, and, and maybe some of you here, you're, you're using that excuse. And I'm going to say excuse loosely, because I know there's some of us like, look, we got to pay our bills, especially with COVID, maybe, you're struggling and it's just not the appropriate time to invest. But for a majority of us, look, we don't live in a third world country, right? If we need to get a thousand dollars, we can kind of go get that, whether it's a job or, you know, do some dog walking or, you know, go do some right. 
other, you know, lift. There's, there's so many options, but when I hear, I can't afford it, it, it's more of like a defense and it might be one that you use. I used to use, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And as soon as I was like, you know what? I realize I now have to put out the money to get the money back. You have to. <laughs> it's a reason. You that absolutely I- do. <laughs> you do. It's the old adage is so true. You have to spend money to make money. You know, I just, um, and I've hired several assistants over the years. And one of the breakthroughs was I actually, I, and you know, you, I mean, if you're out there and going, oh, well, that's just Jim. Cause he's like, awesome. He's a badass. Well, I wasn't always a badass. Um, I Thank actually, you <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Um, yeah. Um, I had a friend actually do a, a, mine, a, a Mike Mandel mindscaping on me. And that's when I, after that, I hired a, I hired a coach and I hired a, a web team and um, that coach didn't work out. And, and I'm, you know, I'm happy to say, I mean, I spent, you know, a thousand bucks, didn't get really anything out of it. And there's, and I talked to other hypnotists who've had that kind of experience where I hired somebody that didn't work out. And that was 10 years ago. I haven't heard of it. Like that's a business expense. You, you can't just go, oh, well, it's never going to work. You got to hire somebody else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, like I just hired a new, a new assistant and um, it's costing me more than I'm comfortable with. It's not that much, but it's, you know, it's a car payment or so, you know, and, and it's, it's uncomfortable because I'm like, ah, but I know I'm not going to get to that next level, you know, until I start doing things like that. Yeah. And that's the thinking that, that, that is what will shift you into abundance. It's like realizing there's really no other way other to invest. Right. And uh, I, I know, Jim, when we were talking, um, I don't remember how long ago, the time is going way too fast, but you talked about like this phenomenon that we kind of tend to do is like, we just kind of stack training after training after training. Yeah. <laughs> and unconsciously, like I was doing this unconsciously, like I just need the next one. I just need that protocol. Yeah. I just need that technique yeah. and I'll, I'll be ready. And that time never came until I lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Universe saw to that, but Jim, would you mind talking about this a little bit more? And maybe some of these, this audience can be like, oh, whoops. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, you know, before I do, if I could, I would love to go back and address what you said too about go back and watch your stuff and say, would I buy from this person? Would I spend money on this person? Because about, I want to say about seven, eight years ago, I built my first website and it was fine. It had all the, the information, the, you know, that, that somebody would need to hire me. And I had my son look at it. He was 16. He goes, it looks fine, but would you hire you? And I said, whoa, I would not hire this guy. Yeah. And so that's really what, what did that, what did that for me? Yes. Training stacking for God's sakes, people just get out and start hypnotizing people. You know, I know I was scared too. I can still remember, you know, I, I don't remember, I can't remember their face, but I can remember when I sat down, had my first paying client, they were sitting in the recliner at the clinic I got hired at. I got lucky. I got hired at a clinic um, and thinking, oh gosh, what if they don't get hypnotized, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous, you know, because I mean, once you, I mean, if you really understand hypnosis, you know, that it, not hard. everybody's going to have that, you know, <laughs> that hypnotic experience that, that we, that they think it's going to be. Um, and, and so you, you're worried about that. You're worried that, you know, they're not going to stop smoking. Well, then do, do another session. If you have to give them a free one, cause you told them it would be one, then do that. You know, but I also, I, it was the same thing when I did massage therapy, I taught massage therapy for a number of years and we were never, you know, when I graduated, I was like, Oh, I can't believe we're going to go and, and, you know, be, you know, have to charge people to work on them, but you just do. And this is, and if you think about it, this, is what all professions do is you go out into the world whether you're a doctor, a real estate agent, a lawyer, whatever. And then you come back, you come back and you do continuing education. That's what I would say. If you want to learn a new protocol, that's awesome. Go out into the field for a year or two and then come back and take that new protocol that you want to take. And you'll, it'll actually be better for you. You'll, you'll learn more from it. Yeah. I think it's like we get stuck and maybe it's perfectionism. You know, I get tired of that word because it's just thrown around and it means almost nothing, but it's, it's like, we have to know it's going to work. We have to know we're going to be impressive. And, and the, the, the problem here is we're making the business about ourselves. Like I have to be impressive. Yeah. I have to be perfect. I have to be phenomenal and get a thumbs up from them in order to, we're seeking validation, right. Through our clients. Sure. And first of all, people can feel that. And second of all, you end up attracting, um, I know when I was doing this, uh, validation seeking, I've certainly done this in my first few years in business, you attract those who want that you attract those who are like, Oh, good. 
I need, you need my validation. <laughs> yeah. Let me, right. and it's just codependence craziness until you're, you're like, wait a minute. I love how you use the, the doctor, the doctor analogy, right? Like doctors, they don't come out of school and they're done. <laughs> right. They right. got to practice uh, physical right. therapists, chiropractors, you know, they're you, you have to practice. So, and that was the fear that catapulted me until in, in even launching my business was like, I don't want it. I don't want to get rusty. I don't want to yeah. let all this money just go to waste by not practicing. So, you know, are you living up to your, your full potential out there and working with as many people as you possibly can? So, yeah. Yeah. And it's not going to be perfect. It's called, it's, it's, a, it's called a practice. You know, not every attorney does a perfect case every time. Not every doctor does a perfect case every time you're a hypnotist. I mean, the, the, it's not the end of the world. If, I mean, it really is like trying to figure out what the best solution is for that client in that moment. Yeah. And it may not be the best one. Um, you know, when I, like if I, and there've been, there've been, there have been times I mostly sell like a package. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're not, we're not psychotherapists where we can just keep them on the line for years and years, right? <laughs> yeah. you know, we're done. You know, we got a couple of sessions and we're done, but you know, I, I have sometimes I've been like, you know what, I'm going to go and give you an extra session at no charge, just because I don't think that you got the results that, that I thought you would with just three sessions. You know, I think it's fine to do that. Or, I mean, sometimes just go, Hey, look, you know, this is, I mean, a doctor doesn't guarantee your results. They put a cast on your leg. They can't guarantee it's going to heal up just the way you want it to Yeah, do the best. Yeah. And I love like it, you're just being transparent about it. Like I know, um, what I, I know one thing I've explained to clients is like, look, we're going to try something. We're going to see if it works. If not, we're going to go in a different route. If that doesn't yes. work it's a different route. And you can explain this to them because again, you, you don't know right away. And I think it's important to not give off that impression that like you're a one hit, <laughs> one hit wonder, right. unless you know it, unless you got it. I, I don't know when that's ever the case that it's just a one hit type of thing, but um, maybe it's just, I haven't, I haven't seen it, but, um, you're allowed to follow, <laughs> you're allowed to not be perfect <laughs> basically. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think that is something that kind of, so I think it does kind of damage the, the community. Um, it damages the, the name of hypnosis, even if it is legit that you really can help every single client for the, every single problem with just one session. I think that it's, it's, it's difficult for the profession for, for practitioners who can't necessarily do that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's an unrealistic expectation. I really do. Um, but also I think for the public, because how can you fix me just as well as you can fix somebody else with this, with my thing, I'm unique, I'm different. So how can you say that it's going to work the same on everybody? But I've heard, I mean, I know there's people out there that are selling the one, the one session protocol type of a thing. Um, hey, good for them if it really does, does work. But I, I don't, I, I, I doubt it. I can't, I can't really buy into it. Yeah. And honestly, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to go in the high ticket direction here, and I know as we wrap up here, but just, just an idea. Um, and as far as niching down, you know, what I realized is I used to specialize in weight loss. And what I realized, I was like, I used to do like a five session type of thing. And I realized I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> weight loss has got so many layers to it. A lot of people should right. struggle with their weight. This goes back to all of them, almost all of them say childhood, all my life. Yeah. I'm like, there is in no way we are wrapping this up in five, six, or even 10 sessions. And yeah. when I really got deep and down into it. I was like, look, these people need years of help. Not really six yeah. months, they need years. And actually that is one thing that has broken through to clients on sales and enrollment conversations is I tell them this. I'm like, look, I'm going to be honest with you. You need years. It's taken me years. Yeah. It's going to take you years. However, what we can do is kick things off and really build momentum. And again, put this in your own words and I get it. We don't know each other. Right. I'm not going to make you commit to five years with me or two years or one year, right. yeah. but, but look, the reality is this, and we're going to get you better. We're going to get you whatever it is, more confidence, you know, eating healthier, whatever their goal is. But when I really saw what these people needed, it was way more than one, two, three, even 10, you know, sessions. Yeah. An offer. I don't know if that's been your experience, Jim, but. Well, yeah, with, with weight loss, especially, I mean, I think, uh, like you said, I mean, that is one of those issues that, so I, so I'll backtrack a little bit. I can, I can, sometimes I can help people with, with like sleep or stress. If it's just a, like an uh, occasional kind of a stress thing, it's around a situation, one session, oftentimes that's enough, maybe two, but yeah, when you're talking about weight loss and here's the thing too, if it's just five pounds and it's just because they, they ate too many Twinkies over the last couple of months, maybe, but but you know, most people they're not they're not gorging on cake and and candy and stuff just because food tastes so damn good. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. 
Yeah. And same with smoking and, and yeah. stuff like that. But again, you know, if you're the expert, you know, you make the call, but there's so, you can do so much more with this group. And, and that's what I encourage holistic healers to do and hypnotists is to really um, find out what they really need and be honest. I think honesty yeah. is really what's missing a lot on sales and enrollment conversation, just being totally upfront. Like, look, this may wrap up in two sessions. It may wrap up in 10 or 15. I don't yeah. know. But what I can promise is X, Y, and Z, right? Like we can get you feeling better. We can get the stress down, you know, things like that. And I think when we can be totally honest about that, that breaks some of the barrier, so many of the barriers. And like you said, going back to will we pay ourselves, that is such an amazing question. Like, and, and if not, what's in the gap there? Like what's in the gap? It could be something simple. Like, are you dressing? Are you not dressed like a, you know, a, a $2,000 hypnotist or a $5,000 right coach or, or whatever it is. And it could be something as simple as the way you're dressing, or it could be the way you talk, right. Or, yeah. or the price of your program. Like there's so many variables, but it, whatever it is, it will come up for you when you watch it back. Right. Cause you are your customer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, like we were just talking before we got on about, you know, different camera lenses and, you know, when I was talking to my friend Grant Saunders in, in England, he's done a really great job of doing live streams and stuff. But he's really putting a lot of work in creating a nice background and and making it seem professional, legitimate. Um, so it's not. It also catches our eye. I mean, how many times have we seen somebody, you know, sitting in front of their, you know, their white wall in their, you know, their T-shirt talking about something, and you're just kind of like, oh, boring, whatever, you know. Um, they may have, and it sucks because they may have great information, but I'm like, eh, yawn, whatever. It didn't catch my attention. Yeah, it looks like you really value what you have. I think you're willing to put in the work, the camera, the yeah. background, whatever you're, the way you're dressing. It, I think it really just shows your level of intent, I think. And, uh, you know, speaking of that, I know, Jim, you have a free gift for this audience as we wrap up here to help them with their journey. Jim, would you tell us what you have? Damn right. It's this damn, I'm pretty mug. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Everybody gets one. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets a mug. Uh, no, you have to buy that. Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm sending you, uh, or um, Liddy's going to send you my uh, self-esteem program. It is four modules. Um, I tell you, it's it's older. So I filmed a few years ago. I didn't have the best equipment on my Mac. So, but if you're looking at it, the the the, the content is really solid, and um, especially. If you'll just go through all four of them, I mean, here's the thing. You're a freaking hypnotist. You're a healer. Whatever you're doing, you could do this for yourself. You don't need me. But I know how it is. Sometimes we want somebody else to give it to us and, and feed it to us. So please use it if you'll use it. And, and like some of the stuff I talk about is like modeling and act as if these are concepts you already know. But if you'll just do it, it'll make such a difference. And, I, and I'll tell you right now, I use these same strategies myself all the time in professionally and personally. I used hypnosis and NLP to be able to get up on stage because I was terrified the first time I did a stage hypnosis show. It works. This absolutely, absolutely. I can totally vouch. I remember um, I was used to be afraid of public speaking too, putting mm. myself on camera. Now I'm like, where I need more cameras. Bring yeah, them exactly. Yeah. Bring them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Like guys, if yeah. you are ready to change, use the tools, you've got the tools. And if you don't, even if you do, or you don't click the link below, go grab Jim's free offer. Learn from someone who's done it himself. Now you don't have to like how can I do this? Like learn from someone who's actually gone through it and see how they're showing up and, and fill in the gaps for yourself by going through this program. So this is all the links only available from 48 hours from the time this email was sent out. So click the link below, okay. go grab this free gift before, it, before the offer expires. So Jim, awesome to chat always, you know, so happy to have you. Thank you for being on the summit with us. Thank you so much. And I just, you know, just one more time, people go out and do this. I talk to you guys all the time, many of you, and so many of you know way more about this, about hypnosis and NLP than I do. Honest to God, you do, but you're just not doing it. You can do it. Thanks, Lydia. I appreciate the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Do the work on yourself and your clients will follow. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Lydia.